I'm Ryan Yates. Um, I'm going to talk about collecting shark teeth and just talk about you know the different species, the evolutionary history, and to know what you're looking for when you're purchasing shark teeth. Um, I'm going to start over here to describe what shark teeth are, um, how they form in the mouth. This is a great white shark jaw. A very large one from an 18 foot, 3,000 pound great white. When I purchased it, I had documentation in many forms, including this newspaper, proving that it was an old, um, from an old collection and not a poached shark from recent times. You can see the upper teeth are broader, more triangular and the bottom teeth are more narrow. It's like a fork and that's like the knife. The, the bottom teeth hold the uh, prey and the uh, upper jaw kind of swings back and forth to do more of the cutting action. It's a common misconception that this is the front of the tooth when actually the flat side is, is the um, front and the uh, rounded side is actually the back of the tooth. Most people don't know that. And you'll see that there's many different rows of teeth and what that, they grow teeth throughout their entire lifetime and uh, the, their teeth are actually very loosely rooted into the jaw so every time they eat something teeth will fall out and it's no problem because these multiple rows they just keep growing them throughout their whole life, and it's like a conveyor belt to keep growing and coming in. Sharks also have uh, microscopic teeth on their skin, they're called dermal denticles, and uh, Professor Richard Dawkins thinks that's where the shark tooth actually originated, uh, is on the skin, and um, in very primitive sharks, the uh, teeth on the skin somehow um, became useful in the mouth and they just keep got grew bigger so uh, that's uh, the uh, origin of the shark tooth but what I'm going to be describing here today is uh, more modern shark teeth uh, such as the great white and the megalodon I'm going to start off by describing the evolution of the megalodon shark here we start with a Cretolamna pentacolata this is the common ancestor of both the great white and the megalodon. It's a common misconception that the great white evolved from it, the megalodon, but they're actually not directly related, but more like cousins on a family tree. Over time, they grew bigger into this Otis oblicus, which is very similar to the crudolamina, just a lot bigger. Here we have a top and a bottom tooth. The top you'll see just like in the great white and other sharks, the upper teeth tend to be more wide and the lower teeth are more narrow. These two specimens are early auriculatus, also known as uh, Otitis subserratus. You can see they have very faint serrations. That's a uh, very primitive early serrations on the teeth. It went from the smooth bladed Otis oblicus to the faintly serrated Otis subserratus to the fully serrated Carcanocles auriculatus. And they evolved the serrations because there is a more of a diet on cetaceans and uh, marine mammals as opposed to just a fish diet. If you think uh, like a steak knife with a serrated edge is better for cutting through steak like mammal flesh as opposed to like a fillet knife which is better for cutting through fish which has a smooth blade. Evolution did the same thing. Over time through evolution the auriculatus evolved into the angostitans, which is the next step towards the megalodon. The difference being between the auriculatus 
and the angostitin is the angostitin is generally more flat a tooth so they cannot stand up when they are when they are being displayed they cannot stand up on the root this one is interesting because it has a pathological twist to it it's just a diff, uh, deformed tooth grew in crooked kind of interesting and then over time um, these side cuffs started to fade into the crown of the tooth and that is Kirkonkles chubbidensis which is the next step towards the megalodon shark you can see there are residual side cusps on these two so we got the uh, Otis obliquus Auriculatus, Angostitans, Chubbidensis, and then the Megalodon. The Megalodon was the last shark in the lineage before the species went extinct about one and a half million years ago when they think that um, global uh, temperatures changed and sea levels dropped and also whales started migrating to colder waters where the sharks could not follow them. And uh, whale meat is pretty much the only thing that could sustain such a large shark. And here we can see a whale bone that has uh, feeding marks on it. Deep gash marks caused by the teeth of a megalodon shark. And they could even bite through their own teeth. You can see here deep gash marks caused by by Megalon always biting down on his own tooth accidentally. And here too, very deep impact hole marks and uh, serration marks as well on the crown. Megalons are probably the most popular collector's tooth. I got uh, different colors here and the different colors are caused by different sediment that they fossilized in. It's all determined on what kind of dirt or sediment they sit in. You can see this one, which was recovered from a, um, from a limestone quarry in Cuba, fossilized white. And this one came from a phosphate mine here in Florida. This one came out blue which is a very popular collector's tooth. They're known as Bone Valley Teeth because they come from the phosphate mines and from the Bone Valley Formation here in Florida. This one's from a desert in Peru. This one's from a phosphate mine called Lee Creek in North Carolina. This orange one's from a uh, deep sea location, an old riverbed and off the coast of South Carolina. Most of the much larger teeth like these come from uh, South Carolina and Georgia from the rivers there. The reason they're in the rivers is because during the Miocene and Pliocene eras, the water levels were much higher than they are now. And during the Ice Age, the water levels dropped, and now you can find the teeth where water used to be. Now we're going to examine the evolution of the Great White, which is a distant cousin of the Megalodon. Here again, we start at Creedal Lamna. And over time, they 